I um, was a student at Juilliard, and I studied with Evan Evans, who was a student of um, Rene, and uh, uh, who had been a student of Garcia, was that right? And it's sort of a long tradition of that kind of uh, uh, training. And uh, I remember the language, diction was always a big thing, you know, and it was something that I feel very strongly about. I think, you know, I can, oh, a funny, nice little story I'll tell you about Schulte in doing Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, we had, you know, a month of rehearsals for that. Uh, this was in um, Covent Garden, and Schulte was just the new music director, and it was one of the first operas that he did. It would have been about 1961, I think. And uh, he had made a fuss about uh, having me do this part. I didn't really realize it at the time, uh, but I found out years later that there had been quite a little squabble because Britain had written this work for uh, Alfred Deller to sing. Alfred Deller had done the first performance of it at the Alderbrook Festival. Uh, by all accounts, he, he wasn't an opera singer and um, he hadn't had much stage experience and in any event, it wasn't very well received by people, and there was a lot of criticism about Britain having written this part for a voice that it would always be difficult to cast. Anyway, with my having sung for um, uh, the powers at Covent Garden and they offering me this job, and um, uh, Britain was upset about it, and so the story goes, Schulte said, if you don't have Mr. Oberlin sing it, it won't be done. We simply won't do it. And uh, so, I, had I known it at the time in my bed of pain in the hospital, I probably, I could well have said, no, I won't do it. Because it had been, if, if Britain wanted Adela to do it and it had been written for him, I think over there that's how it should be done. But I didn't know that. And, um, you know, I accepted it and I did it. And anyway, we had many rehearsals. And during the rehearsals, as often happens in those uh, uh, opportunities like that, the, uh, during, after a rehearsal, the director comes up and talks to everybody. The music director or the stage director could have been Gilgood as well, but in this case it was Schulte who came up and he had us all standing on the stage at Covent Garden and he was looking at uh, each of us in turn as he uh, was having what he had to say and he's talking generally about diction and he said, this is the most wonderful work, it's a great, one of the great works in the English language and I am not understanding all the words. The diction has to be better because I don't understand all the words and he sort of ended on me and he kept talking about not understanding the language and how important it was and I said, maestro, there are many things that I can't do with this voice of mine, but one thing that I think I can do is pronounce the English language. And if everyone in the audience doesn't understand not just most of the words, but every single word that I sing, I will slit my throat. He said, oh no, Mr. Oberlin, no, no, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. I don't mean, I'm not addressing you, I mean for everybody, it's not just, anyway, everybody laughed, we all went about our business. Then came the really final, like, dress rehearsals. I guess we had a couple. And at least one of those, he removed himself from the conductor's pit and walked out into the audience and had his associate, uh, somebody directing the proceedings at that moment. And he came running up on the stage and stopped the performance and came over to me and he said, Mr. Oberlin, don't slit your throat, <laughs> which was one of the nicer things that anyone ever said, at least about my diction. So uh, uh, diction has always been very important to me, and I think that singers, young singers, should be singing largely in whatever their native language is to begin with because the development of the interpretive resources should go hand in hand with the development of the voice. 
I can remember so many instances when I was a student at Juilliard and seeing, going into classes where, repertoire classes where kids were singing, you know, languages that were not their own and they didn't really speak. I mean, they learned the songs in uh, whatever the language was, like uh, addiction coaches and whatever. And you would hear, por di chesti, a bocca bocca bella. And maybe the voice was beautiful, but it didn't, it didn't, add up to anything because the language was not theirs and it didn't mean anything to them yet. Not that that wouldn't happen later on, it certainly would, but to begin with you should be singing in your own language. I really do. Spending a lot of time, at least until you are learning uh, other languages. When you learn other languages, by all means. I mean, I did have an opportunity to sing Oh, many, many recordings, I think there are nine or eleven, or I can't remember how many, of medieval things for a very special recording company. Like in those days it was called Experience Anonyme. Now those records have been reissued on CD, and some of them are quite beautiful, I might add. Uh, the company's called Lyricord, and uh, uh, we did uh, Cantigas, um, uh, which were Galician in Galician Portuguese. That's a language that's not even spoke. I don't spoken now. I don't think we did troubadour and trouvere songs with, you know, uh, uh, early French and Languedoc and Languedoc, different dialects. And you know, I can remember when I was asked to do this project, I said, "Oh, I'd be very interested in the music. is wonderful, but what about the language? How am I?" Well, we'll give you. We'll we'll send you to the world's leading authority at the moment and you can learn those languages. So I spent many, many mornings going up to Colombia with to, to uh, go over the language of the, especially the troubadour things and the contigas with various authorities who were teaching up there at the time. And uh, I had my own little special way of uh, approximating what those sounds were with uh, my own little set of symbols, and uh, that's how I did those things. I always knew what I was singing about, but I mean, I certainly didn't speak that language. 